I'm really fired up for today. Really today, my message is focused on transformational leadership. We're gonna really look at those leadership gaps that determine the great organizations from the mediocre organizations. how to lead through change more effectively, and most importantly, how to build a world-class, top-performing workplace culture that truly drives the commercial strategy of that organization. For every single event, I really have over 30 pages of notes. This is detailed information, survey results, data uh, from the industry, current trends that are happening in that space. I wanna put myself in the shoes of every single audience that I'm gonna be in front of. I never wanna act or pretend like I'm an expert in their space, but I wanna be able to show up to where I can drive the greatest possible impact for every single event. For a week or two before the conference, as we were finalizing everything, I had a Zoom call with Matt for about 45 minutes, longer than usually keynotes will spend. And he asked lots of questions and really wanted to get to know us, know our members, who we are, what our struggles and challenges are, how he could help us. And he made sure that he talked to our people in our session. We had people taking notes. He had them because he, they realized that he, he heard them. People are watching your every move. Leadership is a tremendous responsibility and it's an enormous privilege, but we have to understand that all eyes are on us even if we don't think they are. Everything benefits when the leader grows. When you create a world-class culture, that drives organizational excellence. And when you drive organizational excellence, that creates commercial and marketplace domination and impact. It's the name of the game. Everything rises and falls on leadership. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about here today. How can you maximize your leadership effectiveness, build a world-class culture that is gonna help you execute the strategy of your organization? You have to understand that it is culture, which really is behavior at scale, is what helps an organization achieve and execute their strategy. And when organizational performance is transformed, that accelerates growth and impact all throughout the organization. Every function, every division within that organization. Transformational leadership is this, this idea that because I transform myself, because I'm consistently devoted to gaining best practices, to becoming a better version of myself, whether I'm 45, 55, 65, I'm constantly stepping out of my comfort zone. And because you do that, you are then able to pour into the life of another human being and transform their life. Leadership as we know it is broken and outdated. What do I mean by this? The command and control type of leadership, thinking that if we just worry about results and the P&L and gross profit margin, that if we just deliver the results, if that's all we do, and we've been doing that for 25 years, we'll be good. The fact of the matter is, is that at the end of 2021, and what we've all seen for the past two and a half years with the COVID-19 pandemic, really all the pandemic did was accelerate these leadership shifts and changes that are not only here to stay, they are here to transform the American workforce. Four million people left their jobs in America at the end of November of 2021. Success breeds complacency. When we look at the P&L, when we look at growing our profit margin by X, Y, Z a percentage, Right? When we look at how great we've been for the past 30, 40 years, it's very easy to fall into the complacency trap. I can promise you that people don't want another boss. They want a coach, a leader that is going to walk side by side with them and help them navigate through the complexity and, quite frankly, the uncertainty that we're all still in front of. 
So my challenge to every single person in this room, every single leader, is do not worry anymore about the events that are taking place. I want you to go back and have a Monday morning problem solving meeting on how are we responding to the competitive landscape in our industry? How are we responding to the challenges that are in front of us? And what are we going to do about it? Because that delivers your outcome. It is not about what I do or it's not about what my organization does. It's what I inspire others to do. It's what I inspire others to become. Right, that is transformational leadership. Transformational leadership is the idea and the philosophy and the mindset and the intentionality that me as a leader, as my behavior goes as a leader, so goes the behavior of the rest of my organization. So what we ask of our people and what we demand of our people, what we demand of the market, at the end of the day, we have to take a look at ourselves and ask ourselves, are we first transforming as a leader? Business and in life is not a complicated game. Is it hard? You better believe it's hard, but it is not complicated. Big difference between the two. There's one trait and one characteristic, and to be honest with you, this is the biggest separating difference between a good manager and a great leader. You need good managers, right? But they're revolved and their, their main responsibility is to drive the execution of the business. A leader, right? A transformational leader, you have to be able to create a compelling vision of the future. We need leaders who understand that the old soft skills are the new hard skills. We need leaders who understand that being vulnerable and leading with empathy and communicating with authenticity and realizing that the people that we employ that work at our organizations are humans and people. Most importantly, not just when things are going good. You need to be able to stand in front of your organization and say, this is where we're going and this is what it looks like and this is how we have to play and this is where we're gonna play and these are the management capabilities that we need to execute. And most importantly, you drive the purpose, the fabric, the DNA of your organization into how you communicate that future. You can have the best mission statement that's on your website, but if your people are not on a mission themselves and that starts with you as a leader leading the way, I can guarantee you that somewhere within that time frame, the results are going to be derailed and deminimized. Leaders control up to 70% of that organization's employee engagement. At the end of the day, employee engagement is all about feeling fulfilled. It's, it's, it's having psychological safety. It's being able to be your true authentic self in front of your colleagues and the people you go to work with every single day. And we as leaders, we control 70% of that. And it's needed now more than ever. Because we all hear the statistics, right? One out of five employees in America right now is currently thinking about leaving their current job. As important as pay is, and it will always be a touchy subject, don't get me wrong, but at the end of the day, what people really want is they want purpose. They want to feel that they're connected. Their soul is connected to an organization that serves a mission and a purpose that is much bigger than just themselves or the leaders that are leading that organization. Apple does not make iPhones. Apple accelerates how we can connect with loved ones and the experiences that we can create with family members and friends who are in different states and different countries. That is what they sell. As much as we want to pay our people and be category leading in the benefits that we provide in taking care of those that work in our workforce, we need to understand and ask ourselves, are we leading with purpose first and foremost? Well, as a leader, we need to ask ourselves, are the right people in the right seats? Are the right people in the right seats? I see an Alabama Crimson Tide hat over there in the corner right there, right? I'm gonna pick on Nick Saban again. You wanna know one of the things that Nick Saban does exceptionally well, better than most college football coaches in the entire country? Relentlessly, rigorously, obsessively analyzes that roster and asks himself, do we have the right people in this program? The same is applied to business. The best CEOs, the best board members, the best general managers, the best leaders of organizations are continually asking themselves, are the right people in the right seats? I want you to make a list of your most talented people in the organization. Are your most talented people in those most important roles? And what you'll realize is a lot of leaders will say, holy crap, there's a big gap there. Every industry is trying to mitigate the supply chain dysfunction the supply chain challenges that were all in front of us. While you're working to mitigate the supply chain challenges, I want you to ask yourself as a leader, 
What can you learn from this crisis, from this experience, from this hardship and take it with you so you're not derailed and paralyzed the next time it happens? Because I got news for you. In three years, five years, seven years, there will be another crisis. What we're up against as far as supply chain and all the day-to-day -day challenges he really reset our mindset to say, it's really about people and culture that are going to make companies successful. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to culture. Culture is not perks. It is not unlimited PTO. It is not making sure everybody is happy. Culture is behavior at scale. Culture is, it's what we b believe as an organization. This is what we believe. It is our heart and soul. It is the DNA of our company. The organization is that devoted and religiously worked on culture, developed culture, put all their time, energy, money, and resources to building a better, more effective culture, they grew profit by 756% over 12 years. In closing, right now is your time. There really isn't a better feeling stepping off a stage and just getting to interact with attendees, being able to shake their hands, interact with them face to face. After the really two, three years that we had with the pandemic and being able to be at live events in front of 600, 1,000 people, uh, it truly is not only an honor and a blessing, but I never take it for granted. He knocked it out of the park. I actually got a text from our Vice President of Communications a little before he was finished that said, pure excellence this morning, we could end the, the conference now. Phenomenal event. So excited, so fired up. Lead inspired.